Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. So glad you're here with us. We have good news this morning. God is on our side. The all-powerful God, the creator of the universe, is on our side. And we want to worship him this morning. Let's sing it out nice and loud. Everyone around the world hear the joyful sound. See the heavens open up, hear the music coming down. And nothing's going to separate us from the Father's love. And I can't help but celebrate because we're not alone. We've got it on our side. It can be against us. We've got it on our side. We won't be afraid. And though the mountains may fall, and the sky will crumble. There ain't nothing going to stand in our way. So come on down to the riverside. Wash it all. church. Glad you're here. Um, so can you believe it's Easter? Go ahead and take a seat. Get comfy. I talk for a couple minutes. Um, yeah. Um, can you believe Easter is already here next weekend? So we're looking ahead um, and um, there's going to be a Good Friday service um, at noon. It's going to be an intimate service. We're going to take communion. So if you work, maybe you can sneak away um, for an hour at noon. Come and, um, and join us with uh, some worship and a good message um, on Good Friday. Then Easter is that weekend as well. Have you guys heard? We're having three services. Um, so we're going to do a 5 o'clock on Saturday, which is the 19th, and then two services on Sunday, Easter Sunday the 20th, one at 730. Who's coming to that one? You should, though. You should, because we're going to... 
we're going we're gonna to make some room for all of our guests that are going to come at the 9 a.m., okay? So be thinking about um, what service you want to um, attend. And um, the theme is going to be There is Hope. Who gets tired of ever hearing about how much hope God gives us? You know, Jesus died and rose again to give us the hope of not only a new life here on earth, but also eternal life with him in heaven. So we're going to be hearing all about that. Also, an incredible story um, of how God gave hope to a family right here in our church. Um, we're going to be hearing about that too. So be looking forward to that this Easter. All right, women, um, there is a retreat coming up, all right, um, April 25th and 27th. Have you guys been out to Alliance Redwoods? It's gorgeous. I mean, I actually just visited there um, a couple days ago, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so amazing. So, ladies, if you want to sign up, be encouraged through worship and message and spending time together um, and learning more about God. Sign up for this. You can sign up at AllianceRedwoods.com um, and have an amazing time with a bunch of other great women out there. All right. It brings me great joy for this next announcement. Softball starting. All right. This is so great. So there's going to be a Monday night co-ed team and a Thursday night um, men's team. And um, can I tell kind of a funny story real quick? Do we have time for that? Sure. Okay. Go okay. Ahead. okay. It, it's, a, it's a softball story. Um, a couple years ago when I was playing, um, you know, good game, really good game. I was like, yeah, I'm in right field. I'm like, okay, the ball comes to me. I'm so, like, getting this. Here comes a little blooper right to me, right? I'm running, 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 running. Okay, sun in my eyes. Okay, so level difficulty kind of hard here. Basket catch, make it, start doing spins and leaps all the way into the dugout when Glenn and the rest of my team yells. What did they yell to Lindsay, me? Lindsay, there's only two outs. Yeah, there's only two outs. Man, that was so embarrassing. And I think actually someone tagged up and scored. Like, no joke. Like, I was too busy jumping and celebrating my, my catch, my t one of two catches of the season. So anyways, my point is, is that I'm having, you have so much fun out there, you forget how many outs there are. So sign up and come out and play. It's great. It's super fun. Look forward to it every week. So um, sign up at thebridgeconnects.org slash softball. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, and then we have our connection boxes and cards. Um, if you guys need any sort of prayer requests, please put that on the connection card. Um, as well as that's where we're going to put our tithes and offerings to give back to the Lord. Giving back to him um, and offering is just another way that we can worship him. Um, also, if uh, you're going to sign up for the outreach, the Easter outreach to serve the homeless um, dinner, please sign up on that as well. If you have any questions, you can communicate that on the connection card. We also um, have something new where you can give and donate online, whether it be a one-time gift or reoccurring donations, um, and that is going to be at thebridgeconnects.org slash donate if you're interested in that as well. All right, well, enjoy your Sunday. Let's continue to worship and have a great day. I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. Would you stand and sing that with us? I can hold on, I can hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could be safe, oh, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home, never let these walls down. But you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord, you lead me, you lead me, Lord, I could hold on, I could hold on to me from the inside I could be saved 
it is that you're facing this morning, Jesus Christ is more than enough. We put our faith and trust in him, and when we do, there's no turning back from that. Follow Jesus.
Would you pray with me this morning? Father, thank you for sending your son. Thank you for the gift that you've given us in Jesus. And Father, I just pray for those who are going to celebrate their first Easter in the church or their 50th Easter in the church. God, I pray that you would reveal to us something new about the cross. Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins. Not just for insurance, but God, to have a relationship with him. Thank you, Father, regardless of our circumstances, that we can rise above it through the power of the resurrection of Christ, that we can live victorious through you, Jesus. Thank you for the gift that you've given us. And we will rise this morning to bless you, to worship you, to honor you. Thank you, Jesus.
Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. I have what you need, but you keep on searching. I've done all the work, but you keep on working. And you're running on empty. You can't find the remedy. Come to the way Though you could spend your whole life Chasing what's missing But that empty inside It just ain't gonna listen Nothing can satisfy
come to the well. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Pastor David Meekins, our Celebrate Recovery pastor, will be sharing the word with us this morning. Thank you, David. Good morning, and I want to say welcome to the bridge. My name is David Meekins, and if I haven't had the privilege of meeting you and getting to know you, I look forward to that. To that. Today we're going to be t- focusing on Palm Sunday. And... I like Christmas and Easter because we know a lot of the events that happen. And I would encourage us, as we're going to do today, just to spend time looking at the Word of God. I know that the Discovery Channel and all those other ones are going to come up with what is the real Jesus, you know. And um, I found that when I look at my Bible, I get a pretty good picture of who the real Jesus is. And today, that's what we're going to focus on. Palm Sunday, a great celebration Sunday, and that's what we're going to be looking at. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn with them to Luke chapter 19. And we will be reading verses 28 through verse 41. Just like to wait a minute. Those fingers can roll, those things, and the pages can turn. After he had said these things, he was going on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he approached Bethphage and Bethany near the mount called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you there. As you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this, you should say, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away, went away and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, hey, why are you untying that colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, they threw their coats on the colt, and they put Jesus on it. As he was going, they were spreading their coats on the road. As soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. When he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. These events of Passion Week are covered in all four Gospels. And they tell us from the time of Palm Sunday all the way to that greatest day in history, Resurrection Sunday. And they cover all the details and they want us to know everything there is. Because all of history is coming down and settling on this week. And we are celebrating the most important day in the history of our world. Because Christmas would have absolutely no meaning if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead. Palm Sunday is very important. There's a story told about uh, Tony Campolo. He's a um, sociologist, and he was... Don't give me this electronic stuff, folks, okay? You ought to be here on Friday night. If you think this is a bad man, Friday night just sometimes it's off the cuff. So Tony is speaking at a black church in Philadelphia, and if you're familiar with the black church experience, they have preaching contests, okay? That's right. And Friday night, they got the young bucks coming up, and they got to learn how to preach. And they invite Tony to speak, and he says, uh, lily white as I am, okay? And he gets the crowd working, and he's preaching away, and the sisters are just all in a tither because he's got it going. 
And they're clapping and screaming and yay, Jesus. And oh, Lord, how did that white boy learn to preach like that? And they're just going at it. And he sits down and they're screaming and in a, just a fever pitch. And he goes and he sits down. And the senior pastor comes up to the pulpit. Puts his hands on the Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming, and the crowd is going ballistic. And he says it the third time, and Tony said by the time he had said those six little words, he had the crowd at the same place where he was, and it took him 20 minutes to get there. With that as a backdrop, I want to be able to say to us today, it's Sunday, but Friday's coming. It's Sunday, but Friday's coming. There you go. It's Sunday, but Friday's coming. Okay, now we're rocking. Okay, now we got it going. That's the way it's supposed to be. See, church should be expressive. You know, we start at 9 o'clock sharp and end at 10 o'clock dull. You've heard that whole thing, you know. We do not like that around here. Friday's coming. But all of these events, and and it's so interesting how Jesus said it in the text. He says, I want you to go in and get that donkey. And I want you to know it will be just as I said. Do you know that everything that God has said from the beginning of Genesis chapter 1 and our recorded history in Scripture, everything that he has said concerning the first coming of Jesus, concerning his death, burial, and resurrection, and concerning his future coming will be completed, but everything has been completed exactly as Jesus said. God spoke, and the world came into existence, and he said it's very good. How many times in the Old Testament do we see the same pattern happen? God designed the life of Joseph, 12 years in prison, and then at exactly God's time, he brought him, elevated him there in Egypt. And he became the number two in command and saved the people of Israel and Egypt. Moses was God's man to lead them into the promised land. And I encourage you to remember those little phrases in Scripture. It will be as I said. Two of my favorites are in Judges chapter 1 verse 1 and Joshua chapter 1 verse 1. Now it just so happened. My friends, I want to tell you today. There is no such thing as a just so happened in the economy of God or in your and my life and in the life of this church and what God wants to do. Those things do not happen by accident. God always has a plan, and we've always seen him bring it to completion. The great business guru, Peter Drucker, said, I think, Quoting him, the greatest verse in the Bible is this, but in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. It'll come from a management expert wants everything clicking just right. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. I have really appreciated the music this morning. And some of us are sitting here and we're saying, right. Got the shame and the embarrassment. The house might be ready to be foreclosed on. You got called into the office and got your severance check. There's some things that have been happening in the family that you've just never wanted to share and you didn't think that anybody cared. Based upon the authority of Scripture, I just want to tell you, God cares. And in your life, there is no such thing as now it just so happened. There might be some things that God allows that he does not love. 
to have things happen that he wants because he loves you. But God cares more than you will ever know. And that is one of the messages we want to have ring loud and clear here at the bridge. God cares about you. We care about you. And you know what? To our neighbors and friends, we have to be Jesus with skin. We have to be the one to demonstrate in a tangible way that Jesus has changed my life, that he cares about me, and my name's David, I'm your friend, and I care about you. Now Jesus has the disciples go, and they go into town, and they get the donkey, we read the text, and why are you doing that? And they says, hey, Jesus needs it. Cool, okay. And Jesus comes riding in as the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Messiah. But you have to remember, this is the king. And Jesus is riding in on Eeyore. And not just Eeyore, Eeyore's colt, it says in one of the other passages. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're the king, you are not going to become riding in on a donkey. You come in on a white stallion with red sashes, You've got all your vanquished foes in front of you and all your army surrounding you, and they are cheering you to the hilt. And Jesus comes walking in, just lowly as can be, on a donkey. And the crowd gets worked up because probably what happened was some of them out there in Bethany They went in and got the donkey, and then they went into the city because Jesus hadn't been in Jerusalem for quite a while. And now the crowd is coming out from Jerusalem, and the crowd is coming from Bethany, and they meet, and they have this great celebration. But sometimes I don't know if we realize, and if they realized, who Jesus really was. Because Jesus is saying, I am the king of kings, and you are right in proclaiming, as they quoted Psalm 118, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. But he wants them to know that I am the same today on Palm Sunday as I will be on Crucifixion Friday and as I will be on Resurrection Sunday. And the thing is, is what are we going to do with this king? They're not quite sure what to do. The praise is being loud, and it's coming along. And of course, as we saw throughout the gospel, there are always those who want to make Jesus less than he was. And you know where this started? You got it, Genesis 3. See, in Genesis, God says, you are free to eat of any tree. And Satan came along and says, are you sure God said that? that you, you positive? That's why I think it's so important. We just read the Bible. And the Bible will shed a lot of light on the Discovery Channel on who the real Jesus was. Because that's what it's supposed to be. They come along, and they're heralding him, and then the Pharisees come along, and they said, Jesus, you've got to shut up your disciples. Please, be quiet. And he looks at them, And very clearly he says, if I am silent, if they are silent, even the rocks are going to cry out because they know who I am. And it is our responsibility, it is our job to respond to who he is, not someone else's idea. But he declares for us in the pages of Scripture exactly who he is, and what he wants and requires of us. He is coming to pay for my ugly sin. And he wants us to respond to that message. Now what's unique about this is Jesus often, if you remember, took the obvious and used it to make an illustration or example of the obscure. I kind of think Jesus might have been saying, 
these rocks will cry out because you blockheads haven't quite got the message. But I, I don't think Jesus would have said that. You know, he would have been nice. But he's saying, these inanimate objects know more about me than you do. And Jesus always taught this way. He met the lady at the well. What does she want? Water. And what does Jesus say? You need living water. Jesus always gives us what we need in the context of what we want. He says, you need I want to give you living water. And once you go get your husband, oh, I've got five. Yes, I know. You need love and relationships. But what you're really looking for is a relationship with the one who will love you unconditionally. Well, you Jews, you worship there and we worship here. And, and it's just kind of confusing on the worship. It's kind of like I'm spiritual, but I'm not into Jesus. You know, that type of stuff. We've heard that. Yeah. And he says, what you need is to learn to worship God in spirit and in truth because that's what you really want. There was another man, he was a centurion, and that means he ruled a, a force, a squad company of over 100 men. And he came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, I, I need you to heal my servant because he's sick and he's in the now, I know you're a man in authority, and all you have to do is, because I'm a man in authority too, Jesus, and, you know, all you've got to do is say the word, and he'll be healed. And Jesus did. And the man was healed. What was his need? His need was to have his servant healed. But as being a man in authority, his want, what he really wanted to know was, who's in authority around here? Who's in authority? Who can I turn to? And Jesus says, I'll show you who's in authority. I'm in authority because I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, and I have power over sickness and death. And he demonstrated it on the cross and the resurrection, and he demonstrated it to that man. Isn't that the way God is in our lives? He's always giving us what we need. But often we want so much The Pharisees didn't want Jesus to be the Messiah. He wasn't their picture of the Messiah. They didn't like what Isaiah said about the suffering servant. They wanted somebody to come in and kick rock. Bertrand Russell, the famous atheist, as he says, I'm an atheist because he says, you don't understand. I don't want there to be a God. There are times in our lives, I've done it, so have you, when I have said, God, man, you're doing good over here. And God, I, I, you're really, man, I'm really glad for where you're over here. But the bottom line is, I don't want you to be God in this life for me. Sound familiar? Nudge your partner in. See, when everything's going good, we look through the glass window. Oh, it's wonderful. But when things are not going as well, we fail to put the mirror up in front of my face and says, this is where I need to be. Jesus then continues on. He goes into Jerusalem. And just so you know that Jesus is concerned about you, as I said at the very, very beginning, he wept. Have you ever thought that on those burdens that you're carrying right now, those secrets that you think you're going to take to the grave, that shame, that guilt that you're feeling right now, that God might be crying over that? That's why Jesus is going to the cross, because it's Sunday, but Friday's coming. 
in my life and in our lives, I think, I'll just say for me, I have too many of Sundays and not enough Fridays having to deal with Jesus Christ being my Lord and my Savior. See, Scripture says God is a jealous God. We think of jealousy as, man, I want that, okay? Hey, here's the biblical answer, okay? This is a mechanism, but that's okay. This is the biblical answer on how to never be jealous, okay? Now, um, let me pick on the Jason here. Jason wants a new boat, okay? And he's driving down the freeway, and he sees this guy with a new boat. Here's how you do it. Okay, Jason, this is free. Dear God, I wish I had that boat, and I wish he had a better one. <laughs> hey, I'm praying for the brother, you know? <laughs> God is jealous for you. You know why? Because he knows what's best. And he's constantly saying, come to me. I, I know that you're broken. I know that you're empty. He knows that. And you know what? My name is David. I'm broken and I'm broken. I struggle with compulsive behaviors. And those compulsive behaviors have been a screen to cover up the shame and the guilt and the rejection that has happened. And God knows all of that in your life as well. But what he wants us to do is to celebrate not only that it's Sunday, but Friday's coming. And the question that he asked them, or that he answered was, yes, I am the King of kings and Lord of lords. I am the Savior. And I want you to respond to that. Maybe you've already responded and said, yes, Lord, I trust you for my personal salvation. Yes, I'm taking that guarantee that you've given me. But maybe you haven't. I'd encourage you to talk with one of us that this pass Passion Week would be the week when you make that commitment to Jesus Christ. Let's close in prayer. God, thank you for the opportunity just to learn more about Jesus. Our goal and our desire is to submit to you. We cannot be silent any longer because we've been exposed to the word of God and the word of God says you are the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and our job is to respond. And I pray that that would happen this morning. Begin, Lord, in my heart. skill to understand what God has a will, what God has planned. I only know it in right hand. Stands one who is my Savior. I take him at his word and
that through worship and the word of God that God has spoken to your heart. Maybe there's some things you'd like to talk with someone and pray about today and we have some men and women who will be here who could help you on that. I want to give you a special invitation to come this Friday night to the Good Friday service that uh, will be right here. It'll be a worship service just like we're doing here tonight. Okay, From 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. We'll have lots of music. We'll be celebrating communion. My message will be focused on the death that Christ died for us. But we're going to do something unique this Friday night, and maybe this might be something that would touch your heart. As you come in, every one of you will receive a card like this, and you can see there's a lot of blank lines there. And Jesus says in the verse we have there, Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Maybe there's some things in your life that you're going to think about and work on this week, we encourage you to come back and maybe on Friday night, we will have two wooden crosses up here. We'll have hammers and nails, and you can write those things on there, and you can participate by an act of your will. Nail those suckers to the cross and say, God, I want your freedom. I want the life that you have given to me. I want to acknowledge and say, you are my king, you are my Lord and my Savior, and you do it this Friday night. We encourage you to come and join us on Friday night starting at 7 o'clock. Love to see you here. Have a great week. Come and pray with some individuals here if you would like. Any of us up front will be here to pray and encourage with you today. Lord bless you.